activity. Um, activity is a collaboration between the University of the Arts of London and Simeo Desk, and we've been lucky to receive funding from JISC. Um, the, the problem that we're trying to address is this. Since the development of conceptual art and performance art, uh, what we have discovered is that the process that ends up to an artwork is as important as the artwork itself. In a gallery context, of course, you do not see the, um, uh, the process, the method, or the research that happened be before the artwork. You only see the artwork. So um, typically, and excuse my uh, textbook example, when you look at um, uh, a Jackson Pollock painting, if you don't know who it was, when it was, what was happening at that time, it is impenetrable. You don't understand anything, yeah? A more recent example is um, this uh, artwork by Gino uh, Ballantyne. Um, uh, which again is very difficult to understand if you don't know his work. So the solution. Uh, what we do is we try to capture the process. Historically people have done that by visiting the artist in their studio. Uh, taking uh, interviews, uh, observing them, and then writing up a text and uh, communicating what they think was happening. Yeah? Sometimes they had a camera with them, they set up the camera, uh, they uh, press record, they ask the artist to do something, and they capture it. Uh, and, okay, these are good things to do, uh, but actually they focus on the making event. They do not really capture the, the process, the method. Artists have methods, yeah? They, they do things, they solve problems. Um, so it has been, uh, methods like that uh, to record process have been criticized. Now, in the um, digital uh, art landscape, things are slightly different because the production of the artwork, the research that led to that uh, production and all the communication and everything, they all happen in the same computer in the same box, yeah? So we can capture technique, uh, methods, and the output itself. And because it's all on the computer, we can program it and we can automate it, which is important. Artists don't want to spend time uh, documenting their work. They want to do it, yeah? They want somebody else to do that, that stuff. The idea for activity started from Nepomak. I don't know if you're familiar with this um, project, but um, it's uh, um, uh, the idea of the um, semantic uh, uh, desktop, whereby all the interaction of the uh, user with the desktop and different applications and data, they all can be modeled in one uh, framework and recorded. Yeah? That led to the Zeitgeist project in, in GNOME, which some of you may have um, uh, followed. Uh, but basically the technology behind it is um, RDF, the Resource Description Framework. Uh, it's a generic uh, format to store any kind of information. You have a subject, you have a property of a subject, you have a value of the property, and with these three things you can capture everything that is going on on, the, on your desktop. Uh, since Nepomac, other projects have proposed new models and new ways of capturing this information. We are using one of them, it's called the um, uh, W3C Provenance Ontology. I'm not going to go into detail, but we can discuss that later. So we gave uh, a laptop with activity running to Gino Ballantyne, one of our um, artists who is testing it, and he dropped it back uh, two days later. I was expecting two or three files there. We got 40. Um, and this, this numbering up here doesn't correspond to any logical sense. Yeah, the files have been delivered, so files, uh, the dates are all over the place. So we didn't really know how he ended up building that, that artwork I showed you. So we ran a query to tell us that. We've got activity data in the background. Uh, we, can, we, can run a, we can run a query um, and get that sequence. And this is what happened. He started off doing linear drawings. Uh, and then they became a little bit more aggressive. And then a little bit more stylized, maybe. And he started doing a lot of copying and pasting uh, to a larger scale. So he created these columns or linear drawings, yeah? Uh, and then maybe uh, started mirroring and uh, other abstract uh, shapes, uh, and this one as well. And he brought all of these things together into this file uh, and produced the artwork. So Artivity can tell us how uh, the, the process, the technique, how the file got, uh, got all uh, together. 
That's one thing. It still doesn't tell us what it is. Another query. Why don't we look at the uh, history, the browsing history, and the files that Gino was looking while producing that artwork? And this is what he was looking at. He was looking at manuscripts. Uh, and manuscripts are typically arranged in columns, like that one, for example, or there. And perhaps what he was trying to do with this copy and pasting to create the columns is to produce a manuscript. And if that is a manuscript, it means that the uh, linear drawings are symbols. Not letters, but symbols. Another piece of uh, information. He downloaded and used this file as a background to his artwork. This file is an empty musical score. It's what musicians use to write notes on, yeah? So it's, it's everywhere in the background. So we've got the linear drawings as symbols in front of the musical um, score. So perhaps these things are actually music. But of course we've got musical notation. Musicians write music all the time. Uh, why did he have to do a, uh, a sort of a new one? And this is the next clue that we get. And the fact that he was based in the Chelsea College of Arts studios alongside 20 students preparing for their show. And these studios, when 20 students are in there, are very noisy. So this is not music, this is noise. Yeah? So perhaps what Gino was doing is creating a, a sort of musical score of the noise in the surge of the creativity in the college at that time. This is what activity does. Yeah? It gives us an interpretation of what has gone on in the artist's mind. So uh, potentially we can uh, answer questions about the development of an artist's artwork or a group of artists or even of a whole domain. Imagine we're having data over 10 years, yeah? lots of data. Who cares? Well, like I said, artists care because they don't have to do the documentation. Somebody, the, you know, the computer does it for them. So that's important. Art historians care. Imagine in 10, 15 years' time, they will be writing about art history and digital history today. What will they be doing? Will they be looking for archives? That's what art historians do. Where are the archives? On the computer, but we're not actually recording this stuff, yeah? And of course, um, you know, we could consider all sorts of other things about technique and so on. But for, for this community, we've got various user groups, but I think for this community, it's perhaps important to say that uh, the um, activity can be used to track the way that artists use your software. Uh, what features are more popular? When is it that people press undo? Why do they press undo? What can they do at that point and it, it fails? Yeah? Uh, so perhaps we can use activity to uh, understand how creative software is being used. Now, all these things would have been uh, ideas in my mind if it wasn't for uh, Sebastian and Moritz um, to get involved in the project and uh, transform it into something much bigger and much more important. So I'm really grateful to them for that. I will let Sebastian now talk to you about the more uh, technical uh, stuff behind, behind our TVT. Hello, thank you, Tanasis, for the nice presentation. Um, is, is, is this the most? Yeah, or you can press that. Okay, good. So, um, it's uh, Moritz and Sebastian from me. We're from Simudesk in Augsburg, and we've been uh, participating in the activity project to actually implement the stuff based on uh, Zeitgeist in the beginning, and we moved on to have it based on RDF and Nepomuk, so that we, uh, uh, it becomes more um, flexible than uh, Zeitgeist. We figured out Zeitgeist is pretty limited. So uh, what I'd like to talk about is just to give you a quick overview uh, uh, of how the application actually works, what there is, and what it can do, and a little bit about the software architecture and abstract. And in the, uh, I'd like to talk about what we're going to uh, be releasing in the ne next couple of weeks uh, in the last phase of the activity project that is being funded by JISC. So, uh, in the current release, which is primarily uh, developed on Linux and based on the GTK toolkit, uh, Activity is nothing more than a uh, recently used list. So, if, uh, it, since it uh, uh, records transparently in the background, you're presented with the files that you've been using. And uh, you can access the details of the files uh, by just clicking on it 
and it will show you uh, the region of the file that you have modified it does show you per editing session how many interactions there have been and it does of course show you all the details and the data that has been recorded um, so it's re very simple user interface because um, most of the artists are not very familiar with defining complex queries in Spark UL. That's where the real power is. Um, but uh, it's simple enough to, to have an impression about how, how stuff works. So um, we also added uh, the possibility to export data into RDF format, of course, and uh, CSV to have it imported into statistical uh, application and being reused in Office and where you, wherever. So, and of course, uh, as Tanas has already said, it's not only recording uh, of the uh, artistic data of the programs, but uh, also the browsing history, because that is the context that belongs to uh, uh, to the uh, to the picture. So uh, we have a, a browser um, plugins that currently are very simple. They allow you to disable or enable the capturing, and once they capture, then all the stuff that the browsing history is recorded. And then you, later on, you can start ask queries which pages were uh, um, uh, visited during some editing sessions and five, ten minutes later on, and so on. So um, that's what Artivity is currently presenting to the user. It's very simple. Um, our platform support is, as I said, rather limited to uh, Linux currently. Uh, we have uh, integrated it into Inkscape, and we have a plugin for Krita, and we have uh, plugins for most of the web browsers that are common. Um, I have to note that uh, Inkscape is the application that we started out in the beginning because it's a vector application, and it was most simply a uh, simple one to get into. The uh, problem is that it doesn't have extensions. Uh, soon it will. Um, the architecture of the current uh, uh, release is very simple. We have on the bottom an RDF database that's open link via to OSO. It's the same one that is, was used for KDE, Nepomuk KDE, which is pretty capable. We slimmed it down a little bit so that it uh, doesn't have to run as a fully fledged server. Uh, then we have a very uh, simple HTTP REST API, simply for the reason for uh, the browsers being able to talk to Artivity because there is no, the, the Netscape plugin API has been disabled and it's, uh, currently plugins are being written in HTML only. And there is this native GTK GUI, the Artivity Explorer, that can directly talk to the uh, OpenLink Virtuoso database. All right, so uh, in the upcoming release, uh, we are doing some fundamental changes and we'd like to move the project uh, huge steps forward. Um, so one of the biggest features is multi-platform support. So uh, we figured out that many artists use macOS. <laughs> so if you want real, some real, uh, uh, real data, you need to go where the artists are. So um, we actually uh, redesigned Activity to work across uh, all platforms. And that's, uh, we, uh, that's why we switched from a native GUI to a web GUI, uh, which directly talks to uh, the uh, REST API via JSON. So that's a very, very nice step because um, Turn out there's pretty good statistical uh, JavaScript libraries and image processing libraries available, which just makes development of the UI much quicker than uh, using GTK, and we have much more possibilities there. Uh, on the other hand, nothing else really has changed because it was pretty good, so that's the <laughs> new architecture. And uh, for this phase, the new features is something, uh, one of the biggest one that we have not yet started, but uh, which will be uh, very, uh, very good, I think, uh, is the video recording. We will create, uh, allow to requ uh, record a single frame per editing step in the video so that we can also capture 
uh, uh, the image data and have a visual, uh, you know, um, re uh, recapturing of the whole process because right now activity is pretty abstract and all about data but once you have that data uh, along with the image and see how the artist actual uh, work that will uh, begin to mu be much more, uh, more powerful because then you can do bitmap analysis and color al analysis and a lot lots of nice things um, the other thing is that we are working on uh, publishing methods to being able to publish the results to repositories such as ePrints, which are common in academics use. And yeah, to have, being able to do, uh, to allow the artists to add comments and notes because they might be helpful in understanding what's going on. Zero minutes. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm finished. So, uh, our new platform support, we go to uh, the other operating system and we also added support for the Adobe software seat, but that doesn't belong here. <laughs> you can find us at Big Bitbucket and we're preparing a new website that will be launched pretty soon. If you have any questions, just ask me and Thanasis. Thank you very much.